in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed let your light so shine the bible says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven jesus began a discussion and he was letting the people listening to him he he told them he started by saying from verse 13 that you are the salt of the earth and it says, if the salt has lost its sever, wherewith shall it be salted? That it is good for nothing except to be cast down and trodden underfoot by men. And then it says, you are the light of the world. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. It says, neither do men light their lamp and put it under a bushel, but upon a candlestick or a lampstand that it may give light to all who are in the house. Knowing this, he leaves you with an instruction. Permit your light. If it is true that you are the light and you have light, he says, let that light so shine. So shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so we have here a mandate to allow our light to so shine and he tells you that he wants the light to so shine before men not just in the realm of the spirit that it will shine before men he wants men to see that light that shines because in seeing it they will glorify the father John chapter 6 and verse 28. A gentleman asked the Lord a very interesting question. John 6, 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might walk the works of God? Just keep the scripture there, 28. So there is such a thing called the walk of of God 628 please leave the scripture there 628 what shall we do it's a question that we might walk the works that does not belong to the realm of men there are some works called the works of God that means this one is notable we cannot trace it to an, earth, an earthly origin this dimension of result this realm of possibility is beyond the realm and the scope of men and they are asking him a question tell us what must we do we know that there is a responsibility component to this we cannot sit down and just allow our lives hoping that it will work the works of god what shall we do we want to see extraordinary manifestations and demonstrations of the power, the grace, and the possibilities of heaven. But the question is, what shall we do? The question is not, can the works of God happen? It is, what must we do? What must I do to walk the works of God? It is important for believers to understand that the life we have been called to, just like your lovely worship team sang, that this Zoe life we have been given is a life that has within it limitless spiritual possibilities. It is not the God kind of life. It is God's very life. 
if it is the God's kind of life, it means another Holy Spirit gave us. But it is the very Spirit of Christ that administered that life. It's not just the kind. It is the very life of God. And the Zoe life is beyond eternal life. Because that quality is superior to just longevity. Even those who die without Christ will experience eternal life. It is just in a dimension that is not heaven. Are we together? So when you preach to sinners, you don't ask them, will you spend eternity? The question is location, not the possibility. In the story of Lazarus, Lazarus and the rich man, when they were done with earth, they were still alive, but in another dimension. Are we together? So it's a superior quality of life that we have been given. But it's important for you to know that even though it is a fact from scripture, that when we encounter the son, we have this life because the Lord structured the administration of the life of God such that you must encounter the son to have that life. He says, this is the record that God had given us eternal life. Is that true? He says, but this life is in his son. That means if you tell me you have that life, I have to verify whether you have met the son. If you have not met the son, then it is not the life of God. Hallelujah. But then just because you have the life, listen carefully please, in all its, its potential, you can spend all the days of your earth work not unraveling the limitless possibilities that are contained in that life. Is that true? Yeah. For instance, I can give you a gadget or a device that sustains many, many possibilities but you can hold that gadget and so underutilize it that it almost becomes a burden to you until that gadget steps into the hand of someone else who is equipped with the requisite level of revelation then you will begin to see the potential and then while you admire his use of that gadget he will tell you you are holding the exact same thing hallelujah i used to use a phone i think before this or the one before, i don't know which one but one time i saw a chinese man using my same phone we were flying somewhere and i could not believe what he was doing with it now i'm not i'm quite frankly not a gadget person it doesn't really once i can do the basic things i'm content i saw what this man was doing my same phone only that it was in chinese everything was written there and i mean with with mastery i said you see what ignorance can do i'm seated here with someone by my side and he's teaching me a lesson the pain of underutilizing great things because of ignorance that for me was a lesson there are many people who are active recipients of this life today you sang it you rejoiced over it but then he says if it is true that that life is within you he says let your light so shine let it shine before men that they may see. There is a testimony that God is waiting for that will not come just from you. It will come from those who see the wonder-working power, the display of the works of God in and through your life. It says that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. So there are demands the truth is that it is in our destiny in Christ to be proof producers. That your life consistently becomes a message and a living epistle. Every day, episode after episode, you never plateau. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. Are we learning? That shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day. Unfortunately, many believers do not even scratch the surface of the potential of this life that we have. Nor do they ever command the levels and the kinds of results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. It takes more than singing it. It takes more than reciting it. Your life must demonstrate the reality. Hallelujah. It was our father, God's servant, Bishop Oedeko, that said, only fools doubt proofs. The end of every argument is an evidence. 
when there is an evidence before you it brings to end every argument in acts chapter 3 the bible talks to us about the man who was at gate beautiful and he was there for many 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 only god knows how long then the bible says one time peter and john went to pray it was the hour of prayer and they met that man he looked on them expecting to receive arms and he said silver and gold i do not have but such as i have give i unto you in the name of jesus christ he says rise up and walk he lifted the man and the man got up and because of that miracle the noise that came from that miracle it it he did not have to say anything one genuine miracle made noise until he was summoned the council called him and they said you must defend what we are hearing is it a rumor the good news is that he did not go alone he went with his evidence he stood before them the bible says then he began to narrate the basic and the Bible says when they heard what he said, even though they did not want to believe it, they could not deny. Now, this is what we are talking about. You don't need to like what you are hearing. But once the evidence stands before you, listen, do you know how Jesus began to preach? In one of the synoptic accounts, he did not begin with a sermon. He began with strange wonders. Imagine you wake up in the morning and the headlines everywhere is strange. Who is this young man moving from place to place? And when he was done, then he said, now you are ready to listen. And everybody came and sat down and he began to teach them. Even if you were uncomfortable with what he was saying, how could you deny what was happening the reason why for many of us we do not command the attention of our territories is there is too much speaking without the evidence that validates the truthfulness of what you are saying so when you say god is faithful you stand alone when you say god can give speed you stand alone when you say god can restore you stand alone and there is no evidence in the name of jesus and by reason of this conference you will no longer stand alone speaking. There will be notable evidences that stand before you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, you see, the kingdom was designed such that you would not even have to speak for too long. Your speaking is just to introduce the presence of the evidence. And the evidence will continue the speaking. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, he did not waste his time with long grammar from morning till night. He introduced himself and said, I was sent. And I know that you are going to doubt it, but here is the evidence that I met God. And the rod continued to do the speaking. Are we together? Everybody say, I believe in results. Believe. One more time. Say, I believe in results. Believe. Please sit down. What must I do to walk the works of God? I have studied very carefully by the Spirit of God the subject of supernatural living, the subject of results, because it is my determination as a person and as a child of God that as much as it is within my power and by the advantage of God's grace that my life becomes sufficient result that can bring, it can compel nations to see that he's alive and to reintroduce dimensions of his power even to my generation and so that consistently has been my study please pay attention to what you are about to hear i want to show you the missing link because there are many people who desire to see the power of god there are many people who desire to see dramatic results across their lives and they may be sincere and even well-meaning except that in this kingdom every level of result is knowledge driven every level and every dimension of results is knowledge driven again it's our father in the lord bishop Oyedipo, who said do not assume anything he said learn everything do not assume anything once it is not working in your life take responsibility you do not know it hallelujah are we blessed so let me share with us what i wrote here as the dynamics of the supernatural 
that if you walk these keys and activate them in your life, then everything you heard the man of God declare and challenge you towards will become your experience even here and now. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. The first key, you want to walk the walks of God. You want to see the supernatural, notable, undeniable dimensions of the hand of God in ministry, in finances, in whatever area. The first requirement, non-negotiable requirement is light. Light, the power of light, sufficient spiritual illumination, knowledge and understanding. Please write it down. Light. John chapter 1 and verse 3. John chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says all things were made by him. The him there being the word. In fact, John 1 and verse 1 says in the beginning, God, I mean he says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Is that true? And the word was God. Verse 2 says the same was with God in the beginning. Verse 3. All things. How many things? Including extraordinary finances. Does it, is it part of all things? Including an enviable destiny. All things were made by him. And he says without him. That means outside of his influence and participation was not anything made that was made. And then verse 4 says, in him was life. Everybody say in him was life. And that that life was the light of man. So you know where the light comes from now. In him, the word was life. And that life now translates to the light. In him was life. And that life was the light of man. So when you are in search for light, where do you go to? The word of God is the exclusive custodian of God's light. Very powerful. Light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Still speaking about the word of God. That produces light. Colossians 1.16. It says for by him were all things created. Is that in your Bible? The things that are in heaven. The things that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers. All things were created by him and for him. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, Acts 20 and verse 32, he says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able, in it is ability to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So among them that are sanctified, not, not everybody has that inheritance. They are still sanctified. But among them that are sanctified, a few people can be separated who become possessors in experience. And he says it is the word. The word will come in the midst of those who are sanctified and separate a few people. May you be part of those people in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be a notable Christian. It will be clear in your, that your life is not ordinary. It will not just be a cliche nor a blind confession. A walking, living epistle of the mighty power and grace of God. Everybody say light. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Light according to scripture represents understanding. It represents knowledge. Here's what it says. The labor of the foolish. The foolish here not being an insult is a description of a state. Are we together? The labor of the foolish weary yet every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. The labor of the foolish weary yet every one of them. Psalm 45 and verse 4. 
Psalm 45 and verse 4. 45 and verse 4 Psalms. It says, Ride prosperously in your majesty. Ride prosperously because of truth. So your triumphant entry is not about desire alone. If you must have a triumphant entry to your place of honor, you will ride prosperously. The chariot that you carry you into that place of dominion and honor is truth. Are we learning? So everything we seek to come into its reality in this kingdom is dependent on light. Now please hear me. Please listen very carefully. No amount of prayer, no amount of fasting, no amount of spiritual activity will replace the genuine pursuit for light. All of these experiences are wonderful, but when you ignore, in ignorance, they are powerless. What empowers fasting what empowers prayer? What empowers giving? What empowers spiritual activity? The battery that gives these activities their power is the light that supports them, not the activity in itself. You can fast and not obtain any results. You can pray and not obtain any results. In fact, I tell you, you can drop a seed down and not obtain any result. What turns your seed from donation to a spiritual transaction in the realm of the spirit? God himself being a witness is not the money, it's not your hands, it's not your dropping it down, it's the revelation that powered that activity. Are we together? He said, who do men say that I the son of man am? And he said, some say you are this and that. He said, but who do you say that I am? They kept quiet. And Peter said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed. So that level of certainty is the level of revelation, not assumption. You can hold a beautiful clock, even if it was gold plated. Once there is no battery, it will stand as a monument before you. That is how spiritual activities remain powerless, waiting for light. How many of you have seen that when the power holding company, when there is no light, all the lovely gadgets in your house do not have to disappear, but you are still frustrated. Because what powers it? Your AC is there, two horsepower, three horsepower, whatever horsepower, with the warranty on it. And yet, you can sit there wondering, your fridge is there with all kinds of things there. And simply because one principal factor was not in place, the fridge is not spoiled, you can even buy another one, it, the effect will still be the same. You can say, no, 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 it's not Panasonic, I want, I want Sony, I want this, the effect will be the same. But with one blink of light, everything instantaneously, listen, do you know, no matter how long light has been off, the moment it comes, it does not take time for the gadgets to respond. At the instance of light. The darkness, the light will not calculate the times of darkness without it and then cover it slowly. The gadget that has stayed not powered for two days, not powered for one year, not powered for one week, not powered for one hour. They will respond the same way the moment the light is up. Let me prophesy to someone. I don't care how long you have waited. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, at the instance of light, go forward. At the instance of light, make progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. John chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, and the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Is someone learning? The first requirement for extraordinary manifestations, extraordinary results, is not desire, is light. 
So you arise and shine according to Isaiah 60 and verse 1. I will always like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Arise from the depression and the prostration which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. You don't arise because you are tired of sitting. You arise because your light is come. It says the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That means the miracle that controls your rising is light. When God wants to show a man mercy, he shortens the distance between you and the light that should lift you. When God wants to show you mercy, he will shorten the distance between you and the light that you need to encounter. But for as long as there is darkness, the dominion of evil remains undisturbed. It will remain there. Light. The word of God, which is the principal communicator of light. You may have heard me teach it. Listen carefully now. That the word of God essentially contains three things. Number one promises please write number two principles number three prophecies every time you open scripture you are having an encounter with these three spiritual dimensions number one again promises god's commitment to you number two principles showing you the modus operandi of the kingdom number three prophecies the spiritual compass that guides your life here and now and even in the future. Connecting the past, the present, and the future. Everybody say promises. Say principles. Say prophecies. Mm. Promises, principles, prophecies. This is what you find in the word of God. The Lord showed me a scripture that I saw in the new light. Maybe I should just touch it very quickly. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5. Genesis 1 and verse 5. The Bible says, And God called the light day. What did God call the light? <laughs> and it says, The darkness he called night. So God had to give light a name day and darkness he called night and then the bible lists for us the many activities that are associated with night and day one of it is weeping it says the moment there is night it is related to weeping is that true that means if you want to turn your night to day in god's economy you don't wait for time you bring sufficient light that can turn that night to day in God's economy, it's not the movement of time that brings night or day. Whenever light, sufficient illumination that can swallow darkness comes. Even if it is by 12 midnight, he calls it day. It says, though weeping endures for a night, that joy comes with the morning. So you can choose when your day starts. And if you are like Joshua, thank God his name is Joshua. You can ask the sun, stand still. I am tired of night. That means I, I seize this regulating day and night and day and night. Crying and laughing, crying and laughing. The, my son can stand still. So that whether it is a geographic day or night in my realm, it can be day. Was it not demonstrated in Goshen, even in Egypt, that when darkness was swallowing them, have you mastered the art of keeping your day stable? The light he called day and the darkness he called night. Hallelujah. The moment your light comes, it has become day for you. The moment your light comes, there are many people whose light came in the night. While they were studying, 
geographically speaking in the night but light came and for them that was the end of night so whether it is physical day or night in your realm it remains day perpetually he said he made two great lights one to rule in the day and one to rule in the night have you gone to the stadium in the night and sometimes when they are playing a match or a crusade if they if they blindfold you and you come there you will not even know whether it's day or night because of the high level of illumination you have to look at the sky to know that oh it's night hallelujah someone shout light now please sit down there are two reasons according to scripture why jesus cried in the bible the bible records that jesus wept john eleven thirty five. 35 that's the first reason why he cried he cried because he was at lazarus's grave and the bible says when he cried they said oh how he loved him so he was moved with compassion and he cried second reason why he cried i believe that should be luke 19 from verse 41 and 42 luke chapter 19 from verse 41 the bible says he came near and beheld that city jerusalem now and wept over it why did he cry 42 saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace he says but they are hid from your eyes not from your hands from your eyes because your hands will only hold what your eyes have seen it doesn't have to be hidden from your hands it can be close to your hands and yet hidden from your eyes are we are we learning now the bible says in sodom and gomorrah when the angels came to rescue lot when he got there he met a level of moral decadence in Sodom and Gomorrah and when the angels went in to Lot's room the people in that land came and said where are these angels that we may know them are you in your is that in your Bible and then Lot said no 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 don't do this kind of abomination against the Lord I will even give you my daughters and they said no is these angels that we want and the Bible says the angels drew Lot inside and struck the people with blindness and the Bible leaves a very interesting statement. He said they wearied themselves at the door. They were right there at the door. And because they were blind, their hands were okay. The art of just bending the knob to open it. They wearied themselves. There are many people who are standing in front of the door. But simply because their eyes are closed, they wearied themselves at the door. The miracle of open eyes is a real miracle. The miracle of open eyes is a real miracle. Every time Jesus saw blind people, he did not leave them in that condition. It was a message. Many believers, I submit to you, are very blind spiritually and are not interested in learning the ways of God but they are interested in the results that follow his ways you see the way it works is you have to know the ways of god to experience his glory if you cannot experience if you don't know his ways you cannot know his glory exodus 33 the first request that moses made was in verse 15 he says lord show me your way show me your way show me your way did i get that right exodus uh show me your way and then you back up to verse 18 that will be exodus what now and he says show me your glory so it was his way first and then his glory show me your way and then show me your glory thank you verse 13 now it says show me thy way is that true so he first asked of his way now go to verse 18 five verses later and he now pleaded and said show me your glory so if you do not know his ways you cannot know his glory many believers desire the glory of god but they do not want to learn the ways of god 
I wrote down here, in this kingdom, dominion in any area is based on sufficient knowledge, not just knowledge. Let's read it together if you can see it projected. Can we read together? One to read. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. I will always give this example. Please look at me, everybody. For a student in school who scores 10% over 100, a student who scores 20%, a student who scores 30%, and a student who scores 35%, who was the highest? Who passed in a great system of A to F? Are you seeing that now? If you are to give an award based on who was the highest, the one who got 35 will come to receive the award as the highest. But if you are to qualify them based on who scored F or D or E or C, all of them failed. That means the one who scored zero, the one who didn't write the exam, and the one who passed more will all stand in the same category. It is dangerous to know little. Because you will receive the same recompense with the person who is not even serious. This is the challenge with many believers. Something small about finances. Something small about prayer. Something small about the Holy Ghost. Something small about speed. Something small about victory. And you find out that our results become the same. As the person who is absolutely not interested in the things of God. And we say, Lord, this is unfair. But at least I go to church. Do not forget my, anal my analogy. 35 over 100. Based on the great system is this. Hmm. Could that be why many, many believers don't seem to rise? To the point where people can look at you and say, at least me, I'm sure I'm not serious with God. But you who looks like you are serious, why are our results the same? In the name of Jesus, the kind of light that fires from heaven through his word to you, it will produce a clear difference between you and anyone who is not serious with God. Please sit down. Sufficient knowledge sufficient not enough the person who gets a may not get 100 but he did not fail too far to be mocked are we together everybody say light let me challenge you therefore in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god this is not the season for empty noise this is the season to go back and camp with the truth some of you, after this conference, go and get pastor's materials. Don't say, I was there when he taught it. Has the result justified your being there that day? Camp with it. Lord, this finance thing, I am tired. You are lifting my prophet. You are honoring him, giving him a voice. I can't be here sitting saying amen every Sunday. And this thing is not changing. And you go and camp with it. The Bible says, through desire, Proverbs 18.1, a man haven't separated him. You see, most, you don't hear these kinds of testimonies again, where people would tell you, I took a three days retreat in prayer and fasting, locking myself with the word. Father, let light come from heaven. There has to be a way. Why is this thing not moving? Can I tell you, the only person who receives an answer is the one who can ask a question. An answer is a harvest. The seed is a question. If you are too proud to ask and to inquire, you are also too proud to receive. Father, why is this not working? That to take care of two children, I'm a Christian, I love God, and it looks like I'm dying. Whereas there is someone who, as at the time I came to Abuja, I was the one helping this person. It's not unhealthy comparison, but I'm provoking myself unto godliness. There has to be a way. The Bible says in Jeremiah, has God helped somebody tonight? 
it says thus saith the lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the good path wherein is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls but they said we will not walk there are many many people who are absolutely bankrupt of results and only remain as commentators in life I have never seen, I may be wrong, but I've never seen far winds. They are the ones who lift the profit. And when they are converting it to cash, I'm not aware that they call anybody anywhere and say, because you were in the stadium, come and share. Stop being a fan and challenge yourself and this fan mentality that i am just around good things but i never partake of it i am always i was there when he testified i was there when they prophesied i was there i saw the person fall down i saw the person cry i was there 10 years ago i still remember a fan mentality you must challenge yourself lord if it will happen i will be part of it in the name of Jesus Christ, someone shout light. Please, in one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and declare, open up, open up for light. I speak to my destiny. Uh, I've encompassed this mountain long enough. Open up. Someone, you are prophesying in the name of Jesus. I am a man of God, but I am tired of this level of ministry. Lord, stretch me to a higher level by the power of light. Bring exactitude to my results, exactitude and mastery to my spiritual experience. In the name of Jesus, please sit down. So the first non-negotiable requirement, if your life must be extraordinary and if you must host and manifest superior dimensions of the glory of God, is light access to knowledge you must know what is there this kingdom is knowledge dependent number two now pay attention to this one the second key is the knowledge of the conditions required to activate the promises of god the knowledge of the conditions required to activate the promises of God it is one thing to know what God has said and respectfully speaking you can die there with sufficient knowledge that God said it knowing that God said it does not make it happen you must know what conditions have been connected to that promise I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that this is where many 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 believers including church people have missed it we are full of the knowledge of what God has said but most people do not contend to move further to know the conditions that are connected Deuteronomy chapter 28 please from verse 1 and 2 Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass the bible says if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to do what to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day it says that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if 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 knowing the blessings will not make them happen reciting them may not make them happen listen most believers know what god has said but they do not know what it takes the demands the conditions connected to it I know it is my destiny in Christ to rise, but what condition was connected to that? I know it is in my destiny to prosper, but what condition is connected to that? Hallelujah. 
Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 19 and 20. Isaiah chapter 1, 19 and 20. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Apostle, there is good in that land, just like pastor was sharing. He has revealed to you, I was so blessed. In fact, I think we should look at that scripture again. Deuteronomy chapter 8, from verse 7 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 9. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. Let your amen not just mean let it be so. Let your amen also mean I amen to obtain grace to find out what it takes. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Reading to verse 9. A land of wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates and of oil and of honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. So there is such a realm as that. A land where thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and whose hills thou mayest dig as brass. The average believer will say amen. And leave this statement as a parable and a painful, a painful memory verse in your life. But somebody will say, Lord, I have found what you have said. What is my own part? What do I need to do? Listen carefully. For some of you here, this is the reason why 2019 has become the same thing as 2020. Regardless of the prophecy. 2020, the same thing as 2021. And if you don't hear this, I pray not that 2022 becomes just like last year. The demands, the demands, what does it take? What does it take, oh God, to be the head and not the tail? What does it take, oh God, to become a voice? What does it take, oh God, to command the attention of heaven? What does it take to carry genuine spiritual power? What does it take to attract favor to my domain perpetually? Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along? eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest the knowledge of the conditions required listen every time you find a promise in scripture draw two lines write that promise on one side then begin the part two of your learning. What is the condition, oh God? Don't just say, I am the head and not the tail. If it is your confession to build up, fine. But if you mean just by speaking it, it will automatically happen. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you may sit there waiting and waiting and waiting even forever. Everybody say conditions. Every time you read the Bible, you will find out, ladies and gentlemen, that scripture is full of people who triumph because they not only saw the possibilities, but they stayed until they also received the conditions. I'll give you an example. The Bible talks about Jericho, popular scripture. How that it was shot, nothing would go in, nothing would come out. How in the world would you defeat such a city that five chariots could stand on the fence? And Joshua had to wait to know what is our own part. Victory is certain. God has spoken. Victory is not in our efforts. Victory is in his voice. So because he has spoken, we know 
that victory is there but now walking in the reality of that victory they had to wait until he came and he said here is the instruction that is connected your own path is go around once they would have said why do we need to go around once let's just go around six times in one day once and on the sixth day he said don't mind what you see just keep moving and at the seventh time he said shout i thought you would say fight he said shout is it in your bible the bible says as they shouted that wall crumbled it didn't fall it sank because if the wall falls it will still become another fence it sank when peter saw jesus walking on water he wanted the same results and jesus said the result is obtainable if it be thou bid me come the instruction come not swim come peter would have said i'm a fisherman i will swim when i come to you <clears throat> come listen i challenge you in the name of jesus go and write down every area you need to see the glory of god in your life and then contend for grace contend for grace i think it's leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 please give it to us leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 and moses said this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do he says and the glory of the lord shall appear there is always what you will do this is the thing that the lord commanded that you should do are we together condition number three and we'll wrap it up for tonight are you ready for number three the third key or requirement if you want to see notable extraordinary manifestations of the grace of god you want to command supernatural possibilities is that you must be ready to take actions of obedience actions of obedience not actions actions of obedience in one word we call it faith faith in one word is action actions of obedience faith is more than believing faith is more than confessing faith is more than wishing faith is more than speaking positively until there is action in the direction of obedience you are not walking by faith Luke chapter 1 and verse 45 Mary again with the angel when he came to Mary Luke chapter 1 and verse 45 it says blessed is she that believed is that in your Bible it says for there shall be a performance say performance of those things that were told her say told her there is a difference between what was told even though it's the lord who said it and a performance of it god said it to me we don't doubt it but it takes another dynamics to have its performance blessed is she that believed the word believe there does not just mean merely agree with god <clears throat> blessed is she that puts herself in a position where she's willing to act even as directed by the Lord. Are we together now? Yes. For unto her there shall be a performance. Acts chapter 3 and verse 16. In defense of the miracle that had happened, Peter stood before the council and he said, and his name, through faith, in his name had made this man strong whom ye see and know it was not just the name it was faith in the name the name is powerful whether it works for you or not it is powerful but it is your faith in the name that draws that power to your direction listen if you never receive a miracle from god ever in your lifetime it does not change the potency of who he is 
in his name and in his person that will now channel your portion of that testimony to you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.